keyframeless animation just got a huge upgrade in Final Cut Pro. Pro Animate now has 28 new presets, some new categories like wipe in, wipe out, and zoom, quality of life tweaks, bug fixes, and the update is free if you already own it. Link down below. These presets are built to make animation easier for everyone. Pros who are tired of fighting Final Cut Pro's limited keyframe tools, and beginners who find keyframes confusing or intimidating. And it's already helping hundreds of editors level up their videos. If this is your first time hearing about Pro Animate, it's a pack of 275 customizable keyframeless presets that work as adjustment layers and effects. For example, you can apply one of the adjustment layers onto your footage and it looks like this. And if you use that same adjustment layer on top of multiple layers, it affects all of the layers. But you can also apply an effect directly to an individual clip if you only want to affect that specific layer. You can, of course, stack effects and then adjust those parameters in the inspector window to create unique and dynamic animations. In this video, I'll walk you through the new presets, the new features, the quality of life improvements, and the bug fixes so you can see exactly what's changed. So let's have a look at some of the new effects now available with Pro Animate. I'll scroll down to the new zoom category over here and we'll start with punch zoom. This creates a nice zoom in into your footage that looks like this. And what's really nice is we have these on-screen controls. So you can adjust the zoom point and you can also adjust the zoom amount easily like that. You have the ability to turn sharpening on and essentially that just sharpens the footage as you zoom in so that you don't lose any perceived resolution. You can of course build the zoom in and out and you can change the zoom type. What you just saw was normal and if I set that to instant, it essentially works like a jump cut. You can also make it rapid, which is a nice really fast crash zoom, something like that. And you can also slow it down to have a smoother zoom in that looks something like this. Now, of course, this also can zoom out. So if I let it run, it looks like this. Now, one additional little feature here is the zoom safe mode. So what you'll see is if you adjust this position, you can't go past the edge of these boundaries here. And also if I scale the zoom down, I can't go below 100% unless I turn the safe mode off. Now, when I adjust the scale, I can adjust this to less than 100%. And if you've ever worked in broadcast and had to create squeeze backs, they are now easier than ever to do because you can just adjust them like so, and you can add your squeeze back material down here. And that looks like this. Next up, let's have a look at these constant zoom parameters. What I like to do to create a little bit of dynamic movement in my talking head is to have a gradual zoom in while I'm speaking, which would look something like this. And beginners who find keyframes confusing or intimidating. And then if I move forward to this clip over here, I'll quickly show you the constant zoom out effect. This does exactly what you think it does. It starts a little more zoomed in, and it gradually zooms out. And this is great if you want to show your subject and then gradually reveal the surroundings. Now, another thing you can do is zoom in to a certain point. Let's say we do it over a short period of time like so. Maybe we zoom into this white tuk-tuk, something like that. And then we want to hold on that framing before we zoom back out. What we can do is grab this constant zoom hold and we can hold on that for as long as we want. All we need to do is copy these parameters. So I'll copy the zoom strength, double click and hit paste. And I will copy the X value for this zoom point, double click and paste. And I'll do the same for the Y axis. And then I'll grab the constant zoom out and I'll do the same thing. I already have the Y axis here. I'll paste that. I'll grab the X axis, paste that and then do the same thing for the zoom strength. And the result is a clip that zooms in like this, holds, and then zooms back out. Currently, these are set to linear, so we can set the easing amount on both of these if we want, just to customize that movement a little bit. And it looks like this. The last effect in the zoom category is this background blur zoom. And this is great if you just want to blur your background and maybe add some text or something like that. Pro Animate now has 28 new presets. We also have 10 wipe in and 10 wipe out effects as well. We now also have the wipe top left in, which looks like this. And obviously if you adjust the length of this adjustment layer, it'll adjust the length of the animation. And we have these cool wipe out presets as well. 
I've also added a few new continuous presets. We now have three new spin effects. If you use the adjustment layer version, it will affect all the layers below. So as you can see, it's affecting the logo as well as the background, but you can extend this adjustment layer to match the duration of the clip and hit option G to create a compound clip so that it animates independent of the background. I'll hit Command Shift G to break that up and I'll delete this adjustment layer because you can do the same thing using the effects. I'll grab the spin Y preset and drop that onto the clip, but watch what happens here. You'll see the effect kind of crops off over here. So the workflow when using effects is super important because if you're using something that doesn't fill the frame and you can tell if you click on the down arrow here and select transform, the bounding box does not fill the frame. On this background, for example, you can see that it does, but on this logo, it doesn't. So you just need to hit option G to create a compound clip. And then you can see the bounding box actually covers the full frame. Now, if I apply this effect, we don't have that crop. There've also been some new features and improvements made to the existing effects. For example, all of the effects from the effects browser now have an animation speed slider. In the past, you couldn't adjust the duration of the effects. You'd have to use an adjustment layer and then create a compound clip. But now with the animation speed set to one, it takes one second to animate in, but I can adjust that to two seconds this is really handy if you want to stack effects and I want it to basically animate in from the bottom, but also I want this bad TV effect. With those both set to one second, it looks like this, but maybe I want the bad TV effect to last a little longer. So I can set that to two seconds and now it looks like this. You can of course stack these animation in and animation out presets. So let's go ahead and look for the basic scale out preset and I'll turn the motion blur back on for this in layer and it looks like this. Animating in, it then holds and then it animates out. I'll hit Command Shift X to remove those attributes just so I can get rid of all of those effects at once. So I can show you a new feature on the wiggle effects. Let's use the wiggle position gentle parameter which is essentially a gentle wiggle movement. The problem with this is let's say you had a couple of different logos and each one was offset by 10 frames because maybe you animated them on independently. If I move these over here so that you can see them, the issue we have is that they used to follow the same wiggle pattern. So when they were offset and played together, it looked a little off. Now we have the ability to randomize that wiggle pattern on each of these using this random seed parameter. And the result is something like this. Each one of these clips now has a different wiggle pattern. I'll delete these and hit Command Shift X to remove that effect. And let's add this oscillate X position to the clip. And the adjustment here is we have better speed naming options. So we have the normal speed. And instead of just random numbers for speed, we now have options like slowest, which oscillates like that, all the way through to fastest. Now let's have a look at some of the bug fixes. There was an issue with clips blurring when selecting this down arrow and hitting reset parameter. That bug has now been squashed. The page turn effects from the effects browser would become extremely long after being applied to longer clips instead of defaulting to a one second duration. The Gaussian blur effect would have transparent edges, meaning you were able to see what was underneath the clip, but now there's a checkbox to repeat or fill edges to avoid that. And there was an issue with the split slide and split mask presets not behaving correctly. Both of those have been fixed as well. If you want to see more examples of Pro Animate in action, make sure you watch this video next so you can see how powerful it is and how much it will improve your motion graphics in Final Cut Pro. Until next time, happy editing.